Right, so I'm uh, giving a talk on Friday, and I'm going to tell you three reasons um, not to come listen to me talk about using technology to do algebraic thinking from the little kids all the way up to the big kids. Um, and one good reason to actually do come to my talk. Uh, so the first reason not to come to my talk is to prepare millennials for the 21st century. Um, I'm sure that's a lofty goal. It is not the goal of a mathematics classroom. We don't want to throw out mathematics and start focusing on 21st century skills, uh, which are, it turns out they all start with C, I don't know why. Um, critical thinking, communicating, collaborating. Uh, those are things that happen in my math classroom. They do not happen in my math classroom because they're 21st century skills. They're not my goal in the math classroom. Actually, we communicate, we collaborate, uh, we do all those other C words to do a better C word, which is compare. We compare our reasoning and our ways of thinking because that's actually how we learn big concepts. Another C word, it must be important in the 21st century. So when 21st century skills are happening in a math classroom, it's because they are the best way for students to learn a mathematical concept. It's because the learning that's happening is so important, we can't do it without comparing our ideas. Okay, a second reason people tell us that we have to change our math classrooms, which is a dumb reason to change your math classrooms, is that, oh, kids can just Google facts, or they can just use the calculator on their phones, so we can separate facts out of the math classroom. They don't have to know stuff anymore, they just have to think about not stuff, I guess. Um, so I tried uh, to use my phone to help me with a math fact, and Siri was so helpful. And so we got a David Lynch film instead of 42. Um, but like just that aside, uh, if you, so that's the problem, but it's another representation of the problem using technology. And in order to think about that problem and do math with it, I did actually have to both do algebra and think conceptual thoughts. I can't separate out thinking and doing facts and having fluency. And so if you want to do really cool math, and by the way, that is really cool math. Come talk to me about it after the um, Ignite session. But if you want to do cool math, you have to know stuff and have skills. So the fact that kids can Google facts or use a calculator on their phones <laughs> isn't a reason not to teach math in a way that mixes procedural fluency and conceptual understanding and problem solving and methods. We can't take something out of math class and expect kids to still have rich understanding. Um, instead, we have to do what the common course is. Use appropriate tools strategically. Use all the tools. Sometimes that's mental math. Sometimes that's fact fluency. Um, not without understanding, but understanding mixed with fact fluency. Everything is this mush together in good math classes. Uh, number three, it's not enough to know something. These days, you have to explain it. Again, that's a crappy reason to change your math class, because when people say, oh, these days you have to explain your thinking because it's on the common core <laughs> tests, what they mean is there's a recipe to get the right answer, and you used to just stand up in your one-room schoolhouse and say the right answer, but it's the 21st century, so you have to say the recipe you used to get to the right answer. That's not actually uh, why the Common Core asks for kids to explain their reasoning. Um, so learning has not always been about recipes. Way back, think about a Socratic dialogue. They were building conceptual understanding through really good questioning and back and forth. Some of those Socratic dialogues are about math. Go read them and see how, in the olden days, we used to use uh, communication in math class to learn not to show the recipe someone else had learned to you and show another level of mastery. The kids are like, why do I have to explain it? I know how to do it. No, in my math class, we're communicating because we're getting ready to compare ideas. So if you're gonna learn something big, a schema, a concept, if you can't experience it directly, you experience it through communication with others. That's how learning happens. So we do communication in math class before we learn something, as we're learning something. So what's the good reason to come to my talk? Active sense making in mathematics. If that is the goal of your classroom, if you say, I know I'm doing it right if kids are making sense, all the other stuff comes for free. Engagement, persistence, retention, also right answers come for free. Um, so why do kids use technology? Why do they do problem solving? Why do they talk and listen to each other? Because that's what I had to do to get kids actively making sense. And I knew they were actively making sense because they said things like, wait, that doesn't make sense. Or, how did you do that? Or how does this connect to what I already know? So don't come to my talk to force yourself to learn about 21st century skills or how to teach millennials with fancy pocket technology, how to get kids to explain their work on new texts. 
Come to encourage active sense making. Learn how I do it. Think about how you're going to do it. We'll happen to do it with critical reasoning and problem solving, student sharing and critiquing each other as ideas, um, and technology that facilitates all that. But the goal is active sense making.